Okay, how's it going? Today we're going to uh, upgrade the stereo. Alright, I'm going to do a Pioneer 8 inch sub which will fit into the stock box with a couple modifications we're going to have to make there. Uh, went ahead and got this uh, Kenwood 5 channel power amp. In addition to doing the amp and the sub, I've decided to go ahead and get a double den. Some insulation tools, uh, some 9 wire, some RCA cables, some connectors, and a amp installation kit. Step number one is to disconnect the negative battery cable. All right, got to run positive all the way to the amp, and uh, I've got some four gauge right here. All right, so in an effort to do that. I ended up drilling a hole and going through the firewall and then adding a grommet. And I'll post a link that captures the whole firewall process. Alright, so I got this piece cut right here and I'm getting ready to incorporate the fuse. I'm supposed to incorporate the fuse as close to the battery as possible. So I'm just going to go ahead and mount mine right there, hopefully. And uh, we'll see how this goes. Alright, here's our inline fuse. I had to pull the battery out to have enough room to mount it to the side here all right got the inline fuse all set up and i'm not connecting it yet i'll connect it later it's good to go all right so amp placement i have decided that i'm going to go either in the middle or on the driver's side because on the passenger side uh, for my particular vehicle when there's when the third row seat is in people are climbing in and out on that side so I don't want it on that side. I want it a little bit more protected. So I think I'm going to go either here in the middle or here. Um, one of the things I want to take into consideration is having easy access to this side of the amp uh, so I can get it dialed in easily and make adjustments if necessary later. And uh, also I'm, I'm going to go uh, find a piece of plywood to mount it on. And uh, just for the sake of uh, letting it breathe easier. All right, so I cut an 11 by 11 and a half piece of wood and uh, it fits nicely in there and then I check the clearance and everything as well make sure we're good I can get easy access to what I need to get access to and uh, not too shabby but before I make anything permanent I'm gonna start running my wires and make sure that I'm happy with the way everything looks only then will I start mounting stuff down permanently this is my power wire right here, which, uh, lucky for me, I've already run. Coming up here, and up, 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 up. I've got a detailed video on uh, how I ran stuff through the firewall. And I need, I want to tuck behind some stuff, which means I have to remove some of these panels. And I'm removing these panels, especially if you get, I think I got this kit on eBay for like 11 bucks or something like that. You can see, to do with one hand. Let's see if I can get this back there like that. I'll show you. I mean, this stuff just comes right out with, with the right tool. This stuff just comes right off. So, uh, highly recommend getting the right tools. With the right tool. It's very, very easy. He says as he struggles. So I took the power wire and I let it disappear behind, I guess this is called a kick panel. So it disappeared back there and So picking it up from there, we're coming under here, we're going under this one. This thing is massive, and uh, it's got the seatbelt on it, so it's not coming off. So I'm going to go under this piece of carpet, and you got to go through here, right there like that. And I'll probably pop up around here someplace and let it come out so that it can go into the back of the amp. I'll be done with this side. This side's the easy side. Well, I guess it was for me because I already had that firewall hole. But anyhow. Alright, so I used 
this knife right here and uh, cut a hole in the carpet. All right, in order to feed this through from here to the hole, I'm gonna go ahead and just duct tape this to the coat hanger. Make sure you use Super Mario Brothers blue duct tape. That's Super Mario Brothers blue duct tape. And it's as easy as this. Took this carpet back. Belongs. Get the sill plate back. Okay, I removed that big 18 incher. And uh, now I'm going to find a place for ground. With it sanded down to bare metal, I got a nice place for my ground. So I needed a ring big enough to go around this thing right here. And I went to the uh, local Carstaria store and they said, nah, it'll make them that big. So I went down the street to uh, Harbor Freight and found this one and it's perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this taken care of and uh, move right along with the project. All right, so that's what it looks like after it's done. I just basically uh, got some heat shrink and uh, it's still hot actually. Just hit it with a little bit of heat shrink, try to reinforce it. All right, so now I'm just gonna put that bolt back down and uh, figure out my length to my amp and uh, hook up my ground. All right, so as far as mounting my board here, I could either screw it down or I could just Velcro it down. I'm gonna Velcro it down. Uh, for two reasons. Number one, I can rip it up anytime I want to, but number two, the gas tank is right underneath here. Now, I'm sure I have plenty of room, but why take a chance if I don't have to? And then I'm going to go ahead and screw the uh, amp onto this board. So, this has got to go to the amp. This is the speed wire or the nine wire. Also, it has to go to the amp are the RCA cables for the speakers and for the sub. So I gotta figure out how and where all that's gonna go. So essentially what these do is they send the signal from the head unit to the amplifier to tell it what to do. Now as you can see here, I've got six of them because I've got four speakers, two in the front, two in the back, and then the subwoofer is right here. That's why I've got six. And these get run from the back of the head unit to the amplifier. Okay, so this is the speed wire. All it is is nine wires. It's the eight speaker wires and then a switch source uh, so that the amp is only on when the radio is on. And the way I'm gonna get my amp to talk to my speakers is I'm gonna wire the other side of this into the amp and then this side is gonna go into my wire harness so that my amp can now drive my speakers, okay? So I'm gonna be doing green to green, gray to gray, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, from my nine wire to this, instead of just like a bone stock head replacement where I'd be going from the radio into this. So this is the harness that shipped with the radio, okay? That's supposed to plug into the car harness. And what I'm gonna do is in, I am not going to be using these eight wires at all because instead, I'm going to be using these eight wires. All right, got all my speaker connections made. So it's now going from the speed wire to here. And I'm going to plug that into the car. And as far as these guys are concerned, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure I cap the ends of them off and, and then plug it back in the stereo.
took the AC stuff out to give me lots and lots of room to find places to run the cables and took the cassette player out. I'm going to replace that with uh, one of those aftermarket drawer things. So I got more. Okay, so I ran into a bit of a problem. And that is, is that I purchased all my stuff a long, long time ago and just let it sit in the closet until I got ready to do this install. So uh, none of my cables are long enough and I have no way to return it to get longer ones. So I'm kind of stuck with what I got. So that was just a matter of prying it up and, and lifting it out. And uh, this, there was four bolts in there that I took out and then one right there where that white thing is and one right there where that white thing is. Um, I'm going to disconnect that electrical connection right there and I'm going to lift the whole center console out and I'm going to run half of my wires down the middle because I'm really short on length. Okay, so for running wire, you got to remember every radio is different. So I cut my cage, that's this piece right here, I cut my cage up there to allow the RCAs to come through. And then I cut it there. I've got plenty of room for all that stuff to come out because the radio is going to sit on this shelf up right here. It's going to sit real high. Now, as far as getting all these wires snug in there and back there, um, the only way I was able to truly get the wires in the back was because I did drill out the rivets in the cage so that I could get the cage out. Get the cage out, it's much easier to see the route that I took. Getting as much wire behind that big metal structural piece as possible was the key for me to be able to get my radio cage back in there. Everything comes up nice and you can kind of see where it goes. You can actually see, can you see the floor? Oh, there's my foot. So yeah, you can see all the way to the floor uh, if you decide to traverse this path right there. It's real easy to get stuff through. So I've got all my RCAs, three of them, going that way and then for my speed wire I just went another route that I could find uh, to shove that big fat wire down there and down by the driver's pedals so down below you can see where everything came from and there's this post right here that I was able to run everything behind the post this wire right here is not related to the radio it's something I'm gonna run later but the radio wires are all right there. And they are nice and clear so that they don't ever get in the way of the, uh, the driving pedals. Now I routed them around this gray thing and then basically I'm going down the middle of the car. Once again, I'm taking a different route as I'm coming down the middle of the car because uh, my, my RCAs were too short to make the trek down the normal way down the passenger side. So, I'm gonna start tucking wires now under the carpet. All right, so jumping back in the back seat here uh, with my crazy idea for coming out the, uh, the center. I'm gonna have to notch a little bit of, I'm gonna cut away some of that uh, center console to be flush with that. I'll just come straight back um, because I want to come under the carpet, preferably inside this, so you don't see the wires at all. All right, so we use this plastic tube with a coat hanger in it uh, as a way to fish it through and then pull the wires. And we're able to pull the speed wire and the three uh, RCA wires and our Sirius XM antenna wire. All right, so I've got the cables running under the carpet, hopefully within the confines of the center console. I guess I'll have to wait and see uh, how it looks when I put the center console back in. But coming back into the back, um, there under the carpet, under the carpet, until about right there. And that's where they all come busting out. Okay, I haven't cut any of my wires to length yet, but I did strip the ends off uh, the speed wire. And I'm going to connect everything up right now just to make sure that everything works. So I've got everything except for the little blue wire, and then I've got all the RCs over here. I'm going to turn the power on the on the car and uh, and test this wire for 12 volts. Okay, everything's plugged in. The only thing is this final wire. Let's see what happens. I touched it and 
Hurry, it ends Saturday. Bell 224 and 225 excludes clearance. This year, they'll settle for less than a house. Okay, with the amp all wired up, it's time to go ahead and screw it down to the board and uh, straighten out some of these wires, and I think we'll be all set. All right, so if you've ever seen a professional installation, you know that this is not a professional installation. Now, those guys make it to where you can't see any wires and they just mysteriously pop up right next to the uh, amp. But for me, this is gonna work because I tried to clean stuff up as much as I knew how to, and I was gonna see it anyway. And here's what it looks like with the wires tucked under. So that's my amp installation. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, leave a comment or shoot me an email. Thanks for watching.